How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, I want to share with you a handful of things that you can do to your RV that are perfect to do right now in the fall. Doing these things now can make a huge impact. Fall might just be my favorite time of the year to get out and use the RV. RVing in the fall is the best. But this list of things that I do to our RV really help it in the season of transition going from summer to winter and using it in that fall time and not regretting that you didn't do some of this before the seasons were changing. So let's dive right into the list. Now, number one on the list is cleaning the roof of your RV. So if you haven't looked up there, if you've camped under trees and you've built up a lot of gunk up there, you wanna get that off. You don't want all that just staining the top of the roof of the RV for the coming months until you get it out in spring and try and clean it up. Clean it now and try and get some of those stains off. And this is gonna be the first important thing to protecting the RV for the coming seasons, is now you can inspect the roof and you can look for any of those penetrations or cracks or things that need to be resealed up on the roof so that coming the fall, winter, and spring, it's protected and you don't have water penetration getting in there. This is really important for the longevity of your RV. You really can't take this one lightly. Checking the roof of your RV often is really key to making your RV last longer. A little tip to go along with this is we use a little whisk broom for cleaning off those front steps. I use that when I'm cleaning off the roof too. It helps me get around the solar panels, any of the roof vents that are up there. It helps me really get in there and scrub those areas by hand without having to actually scrub it by hand. That whisk broom actually works really well. Number two is to clean your AC. This might seem really backwards. Why are you cleaning your AC for the coming cold season? Well, there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, you don't want all that gunk that you built up over the spring and summer to stay on there for the fall and the winter, and then you try and clean it up in the spring before it gets hot again. Get all that gunk off now. It's gonna be easier to clean it off now. And number two, if your AC is a heat pump, you want that heat pump working as good as you can for this coming cold season. So it's actually a great time to be able to get up there and clean the AC. So take the cover off, dive into there, use that cap as a brush to be able to get the stuff out of those coils and it kind of helps straighten the coils at the same time. And then that foaming cleaner will help clean everything out. I always like to rinse it. This is the kind of foaming cleaner that is self rinsing, but I still like to go ahead and rinse it down and get all that chemical off, wash as much as that debris on there as I can off to make it as clean as you possibly can. Now this isn't all the maintenance I do on the RV AC, but I'll save the rest of that for spring. For now, this is gonna work out great. And if I use it a few more times, it'll help in that self-rinsing to get any of that last bit of chemical off of those coils. So this is a great time. I'm telling you, this is a great time to do that. If you look at the before picture of the coils and the after picture, you can just see how much we collected over the summer and how much we got off in this cleaning process. Now, number three is to prepare the furnace for the coming cold before it gets cold. If you do it before it gets cold, if you have any problems, it's gonna save possibly your trip to make it that much more enjoyable. Because if you can head off a problem now, that's gonna be preferable rather than when it gets cold and you're on a trip. So before I just fire up the furnace, I like to do a little bit of preparation and cleaning before I do that. So we have one floor vent on our RV for the, the furnace. And so you can see everything that is collected. That's why so many people don't like floor vents for the furnace in an RV. But I just pull that cover off, get in there, vacuum it out, vacuum out as far as I can to get all that stuff out of there so I'm not just blowing all that stuff into the RV when I turn the furnace on for the first time. And I also like to go outside and check the furnace. Now each one is gonna be located slightly different. Ours is pretty easy to access. I can pull this panel off on the outside and check things on the inside to see how, how dirty it is if I need to clean anything off in there. And I'm also going to check the sail switch that's in there because that can really build up a lot of gunk or hair or debris on there. And if that cell switch isn't working right when that fan kicks on and it doesn't move that cell switch, then that means the whole furnace isn't going to ignite and you're not gonna get any heat out of it. So I always like to check that cell switch before it gets cold to make sure that it's going to be functioning properly. Then I try and clean off any dust or dust bunnies or any bugs that tried to build a home in there. I wanna get all of that out and away from it. It's still gonna smell like dust when I start it off, but the more I can clean it and get that away from it, the better it's gonna be for the furnace. So hopefully you didn't have any insects or mud daubers try and make a nest inside of your furnace. That's why they have those little covers that you can put on there. Usually the manufacturers don't like those because they can get clogged and then they can cause a problem with the furnace. But if a mud dauber goes in there and make a nest, then that can cause a problem too. So usually 
that's a bigger concern. So that's that's up to you. We have the screens on there now so that we don't have the bugs making the nest in there. So if you have those screens, just make sure that they don't get blocked or they get built up with anything or when it's snowing that they don't get built up with snow so they can't vent properly. So that's, that's the main concern there. So you don't want the bugs in there. You also don't want other things blocking it. So just make sure that it can have the proper airflow in and the airflow out. That's the key to the furnace. So once I'm done cleaning, I'll usually take a, a cool morning, I'll turn it on and kind of open up all the windows and kind of get that burnt dust smell out of the furnace and get it fired up. So that way when I'm ready to actually fire it up on a cold day and run it, I can keep everything closed and I'm not worried about that dust smell just kind of being trapped inside of the RV. Cleaning it early gives you the opportunity to do that. Now last on our list, if you have an electric fireplace on the inside of your RV, I like to get in and clean that out. So if you read the manual, it says that you never need to take the back off because there's nothing in there that would be serviceable for you. But then later on down there, it says to take the back off to be able to clean out any of the dust to make sure nothing's obstructing the airway. So I don't know which way you want to take that, but I would rather take the back off, get the dust out of the back of that heater and make sure that everything is flowing properly. So that's what I did with ours. I pulled off the front, pulled the fireplace out, took the back cover off, and you can see the buildup of dust that's on the inside. So I want to get it off those circuit boards. I want to get it off of the, the blower and the heater unit that's in there. So unscrewing that and just using some compressed air. I didn't have our air compressor with us at this time. So I just used one of those cans of spray to be able to get in there and get the dust out of there. Get the dust bunnies away from the electrical components, the electric heat and the blower assembly. So I wanna do all that on the inside and just clean it all up so that more of that dust that's back there doesn't end up going towards where that airflow is going to be. So the cleaner this can be, the better it's gonna to be too. I've used air from the front without disassembling everything and blowing dust out. And you can see that you get a lot of it out, but I'm glad that I took it apart because you can see the dust that's on those control boards and I'd rather have that dust off rather than creating a buildup on those control boards. But this is my list of things that I like to do to the RV in the fall that helps me prepare for that coming season. Because fall usually goes really warm for a long time and then all of a sudden the bottom just drops out and it gets really cold. And I wish I would have done some of these things earlier. If I'm going to get up and wash the roof of the AC, I'd rather it be a warm day. So before it gets cold. So that's why this is the perfect season to do a lot of these things. So you do them now, you look like you're an RV pro because you're, you're getting ahead of the curve and you're taking care of these things before you're kind of regretting that you didn't have them done already. So I think that's gonna do it for today. I hope this list helps you out and helps you enjoy that RVing process more so that the temperatures turn colder, you can get out and use your RV and still enjoy it. So like I said, that's gonna do it. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will. See you next video.